Welcome to Lori Baptist Church. We're glad you have joined us for this today and this time of worship together. Wow, what's that gang in the front here today? <laughs> How about that? That looks wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who's responsible for that? Nova Lewis today is on the piano. Christine is out. Thank you, Nova, for being here today and, and helping us lead in worship. And then Jen is going to come and sing for us a little bit later. She's uh, got a very special song for us today. And we are truly blessed. Amen? Amen. And we've got some other guests here today. Uh, and one that snuck in right in the, at the end, and there was a lot of hugging going on. I don't know who that fellow is, but uh, he must be a good guy. And they're just, they're just continually to funnel in here today. But we're, we're, we're a blessed people, and we are looking forward to God working uh, today in our worship service. There are a number of things that are coming up in the life of our church. We, tomorrow morning, um, we hope you have an appetite. If y'all are still here, we hope you have an appetite and will come and join us for breakfast from uh, 8 till 9.30. We're having a full breakfast. Think about it, uh, full breakfast, except pancakes. I'm sorry, we don't have any pancakes. Maybe we can add that to the, the meal at some other time. But we've got, um, let's see, bacon and eggs and biscuit and sausage gravy and fruit and juice and milk and coffee. And, and most important thing, we've got fellowship and friendship. And if you haven't invited anybody yet, please do. And if you can be here, we'd love to, for you to be here as well and, and, and meet the new people that are coming into our community and our church and uh, we know that uh, God will bless that effort as we continue uh, to strive for it. Okay, let's see. Um, coming up on June the 20th at 11 a.m., the men will be meeting at Firestone Grill. And there's a sign-up sheet for that. The social servants are gathering Friday, June the 21st at 6 p.m. for food and fellowship. And uh, everyone is invited for that. And then the ladies will have lunch on Tuesday, December, uh, Tuesday, June the 18th at 1230 p.m. at Giorgio's in Framingham. And let Cynthia know if you can attend that. Now, this morning uh, we uh, were advised that we are having cleanup days here at the church on Friday, June the 20th, and Saturday, June the 21st. And that will be from 9 o'clock in the morning on both days until 1 on Friday, and then on Saturday, we're going to have hot dogs, um, probably around 12 o'clock. So, uh, for those who come and, and help us uh, clean up, and the focus is going to be on the first floor of the educational building, including the fellowship hall. So, we're going to work on the, the nursery area and the preschool area and, and, and do cleaning and, and, and putting together there, and we just hope that... Uh, you will have an opportunity to come and join us and be a part of that, of that gathering uh, where we uh, work together. Now, the um, Grace Point International Church that meets here will be invited to participate as well. We hope that they'll have a uh, lot, lot of young people with energy uh, to help us out that day. So um, it won't all fall on our shoulders and backs. Amen. It looks good. We are under budget, but uh, we've reduced the, month, the amount spent over the budget. How about that? That's good news. Caught up with that, so that's always good news. Okay, let's join together then for a time of prayer as we invoke God's presence in the worship service today. Oh God, thank you for this day and those who have gathered in this place, Lord, that has been sacred for us and Lord, because... It is because you have been present among us here. You have touched our hearts and minds and lives. You have led, Lord, with the proclamation of the word and the singing of hymns and through prayers, people to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and faith in you. Lord, bless again this time together. Remind us you are with us in spirit, even in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you will turn into your hymnal, the response of reading number 704. Please join me in the reading of these scriptures. And in praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. 
Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father also will forgive you. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need.
want to take a moment to talk, uh, say a word about Christmas. Now, you may start asking yourself why I'm saying something about Christmas. It's six months behind us. It's six months ahead of us. Well, the priceless gifts of Christmas are not the ones that are placed under the tree. They're the gifts that we give when we give of ourselves. It is the love we share. It is the comfort we lend at times of others' needs. It's the moments we spend time together helping each other. The gifts of Christmas are understanding and caring that come from the heart. Christmas is a prayer that keeps us close and blesses us with a gentle recognition of all that we are. It's you and me in this world wishing on the same star. But last year, uh, Christmas didn't seem to be in a lot of people's hearts. Some even canceled Christmas activities for one reason or another. So how do we keep Christmas in our hearts all year? Not just in December, not just a few or a couple of months. Well, we shine with our God-given talents and we sparkle with interest when we talk to others about Jesus. And we pray so that we know that we are never alone. When we start looking at the world of all the other things, we should stop and think about Christmas. Not just in December, but every single day. As most of you know, in March, we started a mission where we were having a friendship breakfast on a Monday in each month for the community. What a way to use our special gifts. Not for ourselves, but for others. That's what Low Ray family does best. And they, that, my friends, is the will of God. Shall we pray? Lord, as we come humbly before you this morning, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. And Lord, we lift those up that are hurting, those that are waiting on tests, those that are, that are receiving the results of those tests. Oh, what anxiety we must be going through. But Lord, we have the hope that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And Lord, we lift this church up to you that the hearts of the people will continue to do your will. And as I always say, thank you, Lord, for your love, your mercy, and your grace. For it's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Luther. Must have been on the same spirit with the Holy Spirit today um, because the scripture passage that I was led to this week is one that we typically read at Christmas from Philippians. Paul's epistle to the Philippians to the church uh, that uh, is described sometimes as, as the church that Paul loved. I'm sure he loved all his churches, but this particular letter is like a love letter that he wrote back to the church at Philippi. And we're reading from the fourth chapter, beginning with verse 4 through verse 
9. He writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Let me stop there just for a minute because understand this was not only a love letter but a prison letter. Paul was in prison when he wrote this. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it to practice and the God of peace will be with you. These are the words of Holy Scripture. Thanks be to God. Will the children today come to the front of the sanctuary? Today, how are you? Good. Excellent. Thank you for your help earlier. Um, I need your help today. I need you to help me make some faces. Okay. Let's make an angry face, and everybody see it. Come on. Okay. 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 Let's make a surprised face. Okay, let's uh, make a sad face. Okay, they're laughing at all of our faces. We must make, be making them happy. Well, let's have a joyful face. Now, I, I got a question to ask you. Are you girls ever Anytime sad. <laughs> yeah. Well, what kind of things make you sad? What kind of things? What makes you sad? Um, that we're going home on trips. That we're going home. That today. you're going home. Uh, some people like to go home, but you're sad because you've been able to see family and been doing things, right? Okay, okay. What other maybe things make you sad? Having to go back to school? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All the emotions. I, oh, yeah. I love going to school. You love going to school. Oh, okay. Let's see how long that lasts, right? She's in first grade right now. All right. First grade. first grade. Okay. Okay. Well, that's understandable. That's good. And it's good to go to school. I kind of like going to school. I've, been, I've done it so much in my life. I must like it, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, those are good things that make you sad. Now, think about those things that make you sad. And here's what Paul says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Even when you're sad. Paul says rejoice. He was in prison because of his faith in Jesus, because he was telling people about Jesus. And they put him in jail, put chains around his leg. But he, even in prison had something to be happy about. What do you think that was? What was he happy about even though he was in prison? That God would save him. That God would save him. Exactly. And that God was with him. He never was going to be alone because God, Jesus, was always with him. Jesus had come to him. Especially. And you think we got the same sort of hope? Yeah, we do too. Jesus is going to be with us always. And he will, he will save us if we, if we confess him. 
accept him as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let's all put on the happy face again. <laughs> let's pray with me. Lord God, we are thankful that you have come into this world and have suffered and died and hurt and felt pain. But Lord, that we, even in the most difficult times when we're sad or troubled, we can rejoice because we are in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, ladies. Please stand together as we sing our hymn of faith, hymn number 208, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Right. 
ransom to me his grace runs deep while I was a slave to sin Jesus died for me yes he died for me who the son sets free oh it's free indeed I'm a child Thank you, Jan. God's blessed us today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our gospel lesson today is from Luke's gospel. We're reading in the fourth and fifth chapters of the gospel, beginning with verse 31 in chapter 4 through, verses, through verse 44. And then we're going to skip over the passage about the calling of the first disciples and then pick up again with the man with leprosy in chapter 5, verses 12 through 15. Let us hear the word of the Lord. Then he went down to Capernaum, a town in Galilee, and on the Sabbath began to teach the people. Now they were amazed at his teachings because his message had authority. In the synagogue there was a man possessed by a demon, an evil spirit. He cried out at the top of his voice, Ha! What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of him. Then the demon threw the man down before them all and came out without injuring him. All the people were amazed and said to each other, What is this teaching? With authority and power, he gives orders to evil spirits, and they come out. And the news about him spread throughout the surrounding area. Now Jesus left the synagogue and went to the home of Simon. Now Simon's mother-in-law was suffering from a high fever, and they asked Jesus to help her. 
So he bent over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. She got up at once and began to wait on them. When the sun was setting, the people brought to Jesus all who had various kinds of sicknesses, laying their hands on each other. He healed them. Moreover, demons came out of many people, shouting, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew he was the Christ. At daybreak, Jesus went out to a solitary place. The people were looking for him. And when they came to where he was, they tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns also, because that is why I was sent. And he kept on preaching in the synagogues of Judea. Now, while Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered, Do, don't tell anyone but go show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet, the news about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. These are the words of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, many across this great land of ours celebrated the national holiday called Memorial Day. Now, traditionally, Memorial Day in our, in our society is the beginning of summer. You can wear light clothing until Labor Day and, you know, get away with more casual aspects of life. But others remember it as it was intended to be, a memorial for honoring those who served our nation and who died, giving their full measure of devotion, as President Lincoln once said. Throughout the generations, since Memorial Day began, we have been doing that, honoring them, those who were lost in battle. It was George Washington, before our country had come together, who knelt in prayer at the mouth of the Potomac before heading his army into battle against the British, which they would win, but in which he would lose many of his men in that battle. President Washington was recognized as a man of, of, of valor, as a patriot, as a hero. And he and Lincoln and their contributions to our nation, our country, are, are valuable and, and endless as we think about them. But their significance in human history itself pales in the comparison to the one for which we come here today to worship, Jesus Christ, our Lord. As Robert W. Youngs has put it, and I quote, men have always praised and honored certain men in their own generation, 
But Jesus, they have considered as an object of devotion. Men recite poems about Paul Revere, but they sing hymns about Jesus. They uh, construct monuments in memory of their statesmen, but communion tables in memory of Jesus. Before kings and queens, men bow and women curtsy, but before Jesus, they all kneel in prayer. I guess it's because of the loneliness and the suffering that Jesus experienced on the cross that sometimes we forget how popular Jesus was early in his ministry. All the people that were coming to him, seeking help from him, seeking healing, seeking uh, release from the captivity of demons in their lives. They kept coming, they kept coming, they kept coming over and over again. And Jesus did his best to meet everyone's need. Now, Wednesday nights, we've been watching this series called The Chosen. And I know it has mixed reviews out there in the internet land somewhere. But I have found it, and those who come on Wednesday nights have found it very, very uplifting. It gives us an opportunity to consider the lives of those who, who knew Jesus and ministered with him. Now, not all of it is exactly like the Bible. They take the license of Hollywood and kind of fill in some details. But unlike others, ministers of churches, I don't see anything in there so far that I would deem as heretical, as some claim that it is. I don't get it. I don't get their criticism, criticism of it because it all basically, even the stuff that's Filler material kind of points us to Jesus and his life. But in any event, in one episode, the disciples were all sitting around a campfire talking about um, their individual importance to the move movement. While Jesus is outside of the camp healing and ministering to people, and as they're criticizing one another in one scene, towards the end of, the, of this scene, Jesus walks by. Having known what they were discussing, he walks by and says, good night. That's all he says, and goes to his tent to lie down. It was only his mom, now this is not in the Bible, but it was only his mom who gets up and goes and cares for him and washes his feet. Now that's not in the Bible, but that is essentially what the Bible teaches us. That oftentimes, like Peter or the other disciples, we get wrapped up in our own sense of importance and being that we fail to do the things that Jesus showed us to do. We fail to live up to the example that he gave us. And so we, we need to come to church to be reminded that God loves us and has saved us, but he also expects things from us. He wants us to grow more and more like him. Here's the first thing that I want to say this morning about this passage beyond what I've already said, that in some way, all people, as the passage says, are looking for Jesus. Now, this crowd was looking for Jesus because they needed help, healing, the end of suffering, the end of, of persecution, of a, of a demonic possession in their lives. They needed help. They were coming, searching for help because he became the only help they could find. But I believe that God created all of us, all of us around the world, with this desire to find Jesus. No matter what culture we grew up in, no 
no matter what religion we were raised in, there is this inner desire to know Christ. Everyone deep down is seeking Jesus. They may not know his name. They may not know what he did for them on Calvary's cross. But they need him nonetheless, just like we all do. They're looking for him. They're looking for some kind of, of truth, a of purpose, of meaning in life that we know only Jesus offers. As he said, I am the way and the truth and the life. All of us are looking for that. Now, Roland May in his book, Man's Search for Himself, writes these words. It may sound surprising when I say, on the basis of my clinical practice, as well as that of my psychological and psychiatric colleagues, that the chief problem of all people is emptiness. By that I mean not only that many people do not know what they want, they often do not, want, do not have any, cl any clear idea of what they feel. When they talk about of autonomy or lament their inability to make decisions, difficulties which are present in all decades, it soon becomes evident that their underlying problem is that they have no definite experience of their own desires or wants. They feel swayed this way and that with painful feelings of powerlessness because they feel precocious, empty, end quote. Likewise, I believe that there is a, a God-created void within us all. It's, it's part of all of humanity. It's part of being a human being to have this void, this search for meaning and purpose and understanding and as a pastor and a Christian, as one educated in theology and ministry, I see that this is filled with the knowledge and understanding and accepting of Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Only Jesus can fill that void completely. Other Cultures, other faiths try to, but they fail because they don't fill the purpose of God's created void that only Jesus can fill. Now, this God created void did not only exist in each of us, not just us. Humans around the world, not just us, but it existed in Jesus as well. Remember what Hebrews said, verse 17 of chapter 2, Therefore he had to be made like his brothers. Hear that? He had to be made like us. In every respect. Jesus was made like us in every respect. He had that void too. So that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God. 
We don't have a God who doesn't understand us completely. He understands that void. What were, what were some of the words of Jesus's what were some of Jesus' words on the cross? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Who hasn't felt that? Anybody hadn't felt forsaken in their life sometimes? Where was God? I felt it. It's part of that void that we share. So understand. Jesus had the same void. So we got to ask ourselves, well, what did Jesus do about that void that was in us all? I came up with this acronym, WDJD. What did Jesus do, right? What did Jesus do? Well, what did he do? He went off to a solitary place when he got a chance to get away from the crowds. And what did he do? He prayed. He prayed. Life as a Christian is fruitless if we don't pray. Life as a Christian is hopeless if we don't pray. Life of a Christian is meaningless if we don't pray. When people think about us as Christians, they need to think about our devotion to prayer. I know when we think about somebody who's some other faiths, um, Muslims, we know they pray five times a day. At certain hours of the day, they stop wherever they're at and they get on their their, their knees and they face towards Mecca. And Jews, they pray three times a day. They have hours and times that they pray. How devoted are we to our prayer life to God? What does Paul says, say? He says, pray what? Without, without ceasing. We should live a life of prayer in everything that we do. Not just at the supper table or the dinner table or when we go out in church around other people. Every time that we think about something or need help with something, we need to pray and get God's help in that. We make big decisions because we feel like we, we can make them on our own, but when things go haywire, then we're on our knees. Well, if we're praying on our knees before those decisions are made, what do you think? You think God's going to help? Amen. He's going to be there. He's going to help us. What would Jesus do? Jesus took time out. He said, wait a minute. I'm overwhelmed. Remember, he got overwhelmed too. He was just created just like us. Do I get overwhelmed? Amen. Do you get overwhelmed? Yes. What do we do? We need to take time out. Go to a solitary place. Jesus said go into your closet and pray. Go to a solitary place. Take a time out. Pray to the Father. Listen to the Father. And the Father, in his time, will give us the answers. Barbara Bartucci was looking for a, a perfect gift for her husband. And it would include a, a card, a birthday card. And she found one that she liked, and she gave it to him. On the outside, it said, Sweetheart, you're the answer to my prayers. Isn't it nice? Wouldn't it be nice to open it, get a card like that from your loved one and it says that? But on the inside, it said this. You're not what I asked for exactly, but apparently you're the answer. 
Isn't that true about prayer to God? Sometimes we pray to God for things and we don't get exactly the answer that, you know, the thing that we prayed for, but we get an answer from God. And it may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but at some point we will look back on our life and we'll say, oh yeah, God knew what he was doing. Amen. The Bartucci family have turned that little card. It came early in their in their in their uh, wedded life, but it became the motto for their family as things went on in their lives. Not exactly what I asked for, but apparently. It's the answer to my prayers. I pray that your prayer life will be as such that God will use your prayers for mighty things. Pray with me. God, we are so thankful that we have a direct communication, a direct line to the great high priest in heaven who knows the void we feel at times but who fills that void with love and peace and assurance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation and commitment and invite you as we sing together to come and pray. God so lead you and we would love for you to participate in the life of our church by joining it or you may want to rededicate your life today to the Lord. Please I stand together as we sing. I hope that you have felt blessed by God today, that you have felt his spirit in this place. And we trust that uh, as you go from this place and as you pray to God, you, we hope that you'll pray for our church and pray for our ministries here and that you will um, seek God in all answers in your life and he will give you an answer. It may not be what you expect, but he will give you an answer. Go in God's grace and peace. Amen.